Welcome into another episode of Locked On Phillies. And in today's episode, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the injuries to Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber and why it seems like the Philadelphia Phillies dodged a major injury bullet. It's Locked On Phillies. You are Locked On Phillies, your daily Philadelphia Phillies podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, this is Locked On Phillies. I'm your host, Connor Thomas, and we come to you live from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. A little bit about me. I've been covering the team for three years now. Credential Philadelphia Phillies media member. I do sports talk uh, in the morning on 97.5 The Fanatic on the radio here in Philadelphia. So I've been talking Phillies for a long time. Thank you for joining us. And if this is your first time checking out Locked On Phillies, Please make sure you're rating and reviewing wherever you consume your podcast or subscribing to the YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Booking.com. You got to check it out. You know Booking.com. It's Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. <sighs> All right, everyone take a deep breath. Last night was a nightmare scenario for the Philadelphia Phillies. Not only did they lose to the Miami Marlins after being up 3-0 comfortably in a Zach Wheeler start, like I'm not even worried about the game, to be honest. I don't know how much I'll even break down about. Uh, here's your little breakdown. Matt Strauma, Jeff Hoffman, uncharacteristically bad. The umpire, home plate umpire, blew a bad strike three call that should have gotten the Phillies out of the inning that probably would have led to them winning that game. Zach Wheeler was upset, yelling at the umpire after he left the game. It wasn't a good game. But there were some much bigger issues, like dropping a game to the Marlins. Yeah, whatever. All right. And there's 162 of these suckers. There's not 162 of Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber available for the Phillies to just pick off trees if one of those guys go down. And uh, on the final play of the game, Bryce Harper hit a ground ball to the right side, tried to beat it to first base, was thrown out, came up limping, had an issue with his left hamstring. And he just looked in rough shape, couldn't stay on his feet, needed to be helped off the field. He was like hopping around on one leg. And you're like, oh, no, you can't. You, you got to be kidding me. He's playing at an MVP caliber pace and you lose him. Like we just had the conversation about Bryce Harper is going to be in the conversation for National League MVP. And now, oh, my. God, you got to be kidding me. So that's the thought process on that. And then you find out Kyle Schwarber left with groin tightness. He played left field for like the third time all year, and he gets hurt bending over to pick up a baseball. And you're like, man, that's your one hitter. That's your three hitter. That's your two best lefty bats. It's your two best power bats in this entire lineup. And they're both gone within a matter of like, I don't know, 35 minutes, and you lose a game. I'm just like, oh, please give us good news. So what we knew last night was that Kyle Schwarber said his injury did not feel super, super serious. That's what Schwarber said. A uh, little groin tightness. He was removed from the game uh, as kind of a precaution because of where the spot he was feeling tightness was. The athletic training staff said, hey, we're going to get you out of here. And that was his situation. Harper's looked like he'd been shot in the back of the leg. So it's just like uh, – not a good feeling on that one compared to Schwarber. And what he said after the game was even more troubling when he talked about never having felt this type of pain before, this type of injury before. He's like, I haven't had a soft tissue injury like this before. And it, I don't have any frame of reference for how bad it's supposed to feel or how bad is bad, but it hurts. I'm uh, going to get an MRI and all that stuff. And that left us thinking, man, he tore his hamstring or popped something, or nah, who knows? Is it two months? Is it season ending? Like, that would be worst case scenario, but that didn't feel out of the realm of possibility after Bryce Harper's comments last night. So here's all you need to know about the updates that we got today. That's why this episode is a little bit later than I normally put them out, because I wanted to make sure I had as much information as possible before coming to you with my breakdown of what the Philadelphia Phillies have to do. So, the Phillies actually got outstanding news today when it comes to the injury front. Both of these injuries are seen as not majorly serious. Both have been likened to Brandon Marsh's injury that we had like right around the time of the London series. The recovery time estimated 10 to 14 days for each Schwarber 
and Harper. The MRI seemed to come back with nothing concerning on Harper. I don't believe Schwarber even had imaging done. I think he just has groin soreness is what they've listed it as, and they're just going to rest him. Now, Schwarber a little bit less important because he's not going to have to play the field regularly when he comes back. Harper's going to have to play first base. So a little bit more concern for Bryce Harper when it comes to injuries. But bottom line is you dodge two major bullets. I was running through on the radio this morning what the Philadelphia Phillies lineup is going to look like with Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber out. And it's ugly, folks. It's very, very ugly. The bottom like five in that lineup are going to be Pache, Dahl, Merrifield, Marsh, Marshan, uh, Sosa, like Stubbs, those are going to be the names that you see consistently in the bottom five names in the lineup while Harper and Schwarber are out. Because remember, JT Romito is still missing time. Uh, yeah, it's not ideal. So the sooner those guys can be back, the better. And that is the big news. It's very, very good news. I was assuming, right? My assumption this morning was Bryce Harper is going to miss a month, at least. Kyle Schwarber, who knows, but let's just say like, Two weeks. We actually even out the when we had that conversation talked about the guys missing a month each. So by our estimation on the radio, the guys that I had that conversation with, we actually have the time frame cut in half, which is a godsend. There's a chance that these guys could both be back before the All Star break. Now, does that mean they're back for the series with the Dodgers or the series with the Braves? Not necessarily, but. It feels a lot more overcomable now that you know it's not a major injury. It's not like something that's going to nag through the rest of the season. That's good. Even if they take three weeks, right? Like two weeks is the estimate right now. Hell, take three. Just be safe. Get back healthy. I'm totally fine with that because I know that this is going to be a much more minor injury than originally thought. If it's supposed to be like that's why the Trey Turner injury earlier this year was so tough. It was supposed to be uh, a short thing. He's like, I don't think it's too serious. I'll be in the training staff's room for a week. They'll get tired of me, and I'll get back on the field. And then it ended up being like five to six weeks. On the other hand, if you think it's more serious than what it is, like what we thought with Bryce Harper, well, then you got into a situation where it's significantly less serious, so you feel a little bit better giving him more time. You're like, well, I expected it to be longer anyway. Take an extra week. Take an extra five days. Do what you got to do to come back so you're absolutely healthy. And I think with a team with an eight-game lead in the division, like the Philadelphia Phillies have, that is the right way to handle it. So those are the things you really need to know about the Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber injuries. It's not ideal. you still got two weeks without your two best lefty bats and without your starting catcher. And, oh, by the way, Spencer Turnbull is going to be missing significant time with his shoulder soreness. He's going to be out for a while because of what he felt in his start in Chicago or in Chicago and Detroit against the Tigers, which is not ideal because now you don't have a fifth starter in the rotation. And Tywin Walker's deal sounds like it's actually a little bit of an injury. Like they're talking about all-star break for him. I don't know if that's just hey, buddy. You've been really bad lately. We're just going to hold you out to the all-star game. But I feel like if it was just a matter of this guy hasn't been good. And then you see Turnbull go down and your other option is probably Michael Mercado the response would be, mm, okay, Tywin Walker's fine now, and you remove him from the injured list as fast as you can. I, I don't know. That fifth spot in the rotation is really, really tricky right now. It feels significantly less impactful when you look at the potential impact of missing Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber for two weeks. So there's a hierarchy of needs right now, and fifth starter is not at the top of that pyramid, but or I guess bottom of that pyramid would be the way that the most necessary thing works. But – all of these things are kind of swirling around the Phillies right now as they head into a tough stretch of their schedule. Uh, listen, last night was not a good night for the Philadelphia Phillies. Even though Schwarber and Harper dodged bullets, which I feel like we've been doing that all year. Felt like Trey Turner could have been out longer. Felt like J.J. Romito could have been out longer. Uh, like all of this stuff, it seems to be – felt like Ranger Suarez could have missed some time if he had broken his hand on that comebacker. He made his next start. Like all of this stuff has ended up being pretty darn lucky for the Philadelphia Phillies. And that's kind of what you need to go about a season the way this team's going about it. Now you need a couple other guys to step up and they're going to be guys like, uh, I don't know, Cody Clemens was called back up from his rehab stint. He was ready to go. Johan Rojas is also back with the major league team. You can't get, uh, keep my guy Johan down. Uh, so he'll be up. He'll help out the outfield. He'll be an extra 
glove. I was going to say extra bat, but he'll be an extra glove in the outfield to help make up for Kyle Schwarber not being out there. And uh, Cody Clemens will probably just take over at first base where Bryce Harper left off. It's certainly a downgrade, but we've seen Cody Clemens have big moments for this team before. So uh, it gets a little bit Nah, and it doesn't get better, but you already trust these guys. We've trusted the depth of the Philadelphia Phillies. The only thing you look at now as you survive these two weeks is Castellanos, step up. <laughs> I mean, Trey Turner, step up. Bryson Stott, Alec Bohm, step up even more. Brandon Marsh, step up. Like the guys whose names you recognize that are everyday players or should be everyday players like Brandon Marsh uh, in this lineup are the ones who need to make a difference in these next two weeks. So that's everything you need to know about the Philadelphia Phillies major injuries or what seemed to be major injuries turned out to be minor injuries uh, coming out of last night's game with the Miami Marlins. Now, I know it's a little tight to game time by the time you're going to be getting to this, probably around five o'clock by the time I have this posted. But let's do a preview of game two because there's no stop in this season. You have to continue to play baseball games, even though you're not at full strength right now, not by a long shot. So what did the Philadelphia Phillies need to do to find a way to win game two versus the Marlins? Well, there's a couple things that need to be different from last night. It's not just the whole <laughs> being healthy thing. We'll talk about it as we continue today's episode of Locked on Phillies. All right. I want to tell you about our title sponsor for today's episode, Booking.com. You got summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games. It's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. Yeah, we're talking about even your rivals' cities. I mean, Booking.com, booking Yeah, you know the slogan. They can make anywhere fun for you to visit, even if it's where the Braves play, the Mets play, the Marlins, the Nationals. <laughs> they can figure it out. So go ahead and check out what they've got. They've got hotels, bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on Booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay, even in that city that that team you don't like plays in so much. They got hotels that overlook stadiums. They've got family-friendly resorts. Booking.com has so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel this baseball season, and it doesn't even have to be for baseball. Maybe you're like me, and your life is entirely baseball, and you want to just, I don't know, get away from it for a couple of days. Booking.com can help you with all of that. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. So book today on Booking.com on the site or in the Booking.com app and go ahead and check them out. I also want to tell you about our friends over at Fandle. You know Fandle. Come on. You've heard me talk about them a billion times. And I know NBA, done. NHL, done. But baseball? Every single night, you got something to bet on with baseball. That's why you got to check it out, man. I, I love sports. I love them so much, I never want them to stop. But like I was just telling you, as everything winds down from the winter sports and the spring sports, well, we get fewer games. And the sports aren't sports and like you're used to them doing. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever, wherever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's not new customers. That's all customers. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And you can go ahead and check out more in the description of this episode. All right, let's talk about game two with the Miami Marlins tonight. It sucks to drop game one of the series. The Philadelphia Phillies have actually been outstanding in games one of series so far this year. That's why they've been so successful at winning them because, well, they just take care of business series in and series out of getting up. And then you just need to win one of two. And you normally have a pretty good pitcher throwing in one of those two games. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. It's not a great spot to be in. I said a split would be a failure. Now, or I guess I said it would be majorly disappointing if they split with the Marlins. That scale obviously shifts with Harper and Schwarber going down. And yeah, I, I, it's definitely a different set of expectations. Now, if you can split and if you can make it out of this series healthy, I'm going to feel a lot better about the Philadelphia Phillies uh, than what I did last night and earlier this morning before we got the news on the injuries. But Again, the strength of the pitching, it's still heavily in the favor of the Philadelphia Phillies. Christopher Sanchez takes the mound tonight. Now, this is his second start since receiving that surprise extension, not this most recent Saturday, but the Saturday before. And 
Wait, no, it was his most recent Saturday. <laughs> Crazy how long this week has been. Anyway, it's his second start since that. He was really good his last time out. He's got a five and three win loss record. So it's not really translating to the record, but that's fine because it translates to the ERA and whip. 257 ERA, sorry, 267 ERA. My eyes ain't what they used to be. And a 128 whip. Uh, now he's facing in the pitching matchup Kyle Tyler, which, all right, I know my name is Connor Thomas. So it's not like I have a leg to stand on with this one, but who's naming their kid Kyle Tyler? Like, <laughs> that's just it, it sounds like a MLB the show creative player name sorry Mr. Tyler for uh for doing that you can make fun of the Connor Thomas name anytime you want uh but he has a 0-0 win loss record he's got a 4-5 ERA on 117 whip and you're like those numbers are kind of weird it's because he's only thrown six innings this year uh he's given four, up four hits Three strikeouts in those six innings, three walks, one home run given up. There's really not that much to know about him besides he's a 27-year-old righty. Uh, he hasn't really pitched all that much for the Marlins at all this year. And I don't know, man. I don't really know what to tell you too much about Kyle Tyler when it comes to his ability. So as far as games played at the major league level, he pitched five games for the Angels in 2021 two games for the Padres in 2022. And he's pitched two games so far for the Marlins in 2024. It's nine total games. It's a total of 22 and a third innings pitch in his major league career. He's just like, I don't want to call him a, a nobody because that that's not fair to him. But he's just like, he's not a guy that spent a lot of time in the major leagues. That could be a blessing and a curse as we know. So you have to balance the whole, oh, the Phillies don't have a lot of tape on him to, this guy's probably got not a great shot to get through this Philadelphia Phillies lineup. Also, he's a righty, which is – it would have been a good thing if Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper were still healthy. But you can play Bryce and Stott and not worry about it. You can play Garrett Stubbs and not worry about it. You can play Brandon Marsh and not worry about it. You can play David Dahl and not worry about it. And you're looking at a situation where that gives you your best chance. The righty-lefty matchups for the next two weeks as Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber recover are going to be big time. Like you're going to do significantly better against righties because when you put a lefty out there, well, it's going to restrict you from using Stott as effectively. He'll have to play. Marsh as effectively. He should have to play, but they might sit him. Dahl as effectively. Stubbs as effectively. Those guys turn into like Merrifield, Pache, uh, Marshan, maybe Edmundo Sosa. The better option is to, pit, to face right-handed pitchers, and the Phillies get the luxury of doing that tonight. So that's a good thing. Uh, as far as how the Marlins took down the Phillies last night, it was, I don't know, plating very hittable pitches. Uncharacteristic uh, showings for Matt Strom and Jeff Hoffman. I don't think those will continue. It was just weird that two of the best relievers in baseball had bad nights at the same time. The strike zone was questionable. Zach Wheeler should have gotten out of it. And the Phillies didn't really like cash in on as many scoring opportunities. I, I'm not going to harp on that because you just lost two guys who are a big part of that. So it doesn't even matter having the conversation. They need to be better offensively. But at this point, with the injuries, I don't know that we can expect them to be better offensively. So the key to the night's game is Christopher Sanchez going out there and dominating. And I had a conversation about, like, changing their approach at the plate considering who's available. I would not change the approach of this team. I wouldn't, at least not in this series, because the Marlins are still significantly lesser of a team than you. And your pitching is such a great matchup against them that you don't need to like, oh, okay, we're going to bunt this guy over. We're going to just hit behind a runner. We're going to do all that. Like the Phillies have done that at points, but they've also hit the ball out of the yard. Raphael Marchand went yard yesterday. A uh, good swing out of him. He's got a little bit of pop he's showing. Like I'm going to look at it and I'm going to say, continue to approach at bats the way you have been all year when Harper and Schwarber have been in the lineup. And if it doesn't work against the Marlins, well, we can reevaluate as you head into July. But the real key is Christopher Sanchez has to give you an awesome start. He needs to step up and say, hey, I know the offense isn't where it's supposed to be. The pitchers have been carrying this team all year. I'm going to go handle it. And the odds are saying that he's going to do that. Even without Harper and Schwarber, the Phillies are minus 225 favorites on the money line. They have a 78.5% chance to win, according to ESPN Analytics. They're still hugely favored in this game and in this series. And I hope that this is the perfect get-your-feet-wet situation for the new Phillies lineup against Kyle Tyler, who – that doesn't have a ton of major league experience. And that leads into maybe some confidence being built. We talked about in yesterday's episode, the Phillies building confidence before their matchup with the Braves and the Dodgers coming up in early July. 
that's even more important now that Harper and Schwarber are not going to be the guys in the lineup. Like these younger guys need the confidence even more. Like Bryce Harper doesn't need confidence. Kyle Schwarber doesn't need confidence. They could go over a billion against the Marlins this series. And if they stepped into the box against the Braves or the Dodgers, they still know how good of hitters they are. Can't say the same about Marshan, Pache, Dahl, Merrifield right now. Uh, guys like that, Stubbs, you're going to have to see some hits fall in. And this is the perfect time to do it. So a big game, a big series, a big change in the mentality for the Phillies for the next couple of weeks. We'll see how it plays out during tonight's game. Coming up next, as we wrap up today's episode, this is where a lot of people's minds went when you heard injury to Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber. Do they need to make a trade, and do they need to do it now? A lot of people were like sitting there, hand on the panic button, saying, hey, trade, 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 trade. And I got to be honest, I felt that way this morning. That was before I got the news about how long these injuries are going to actually be. So we'll get into a discussion about if there's some external moves that need to be made to help make sure the Phillies can withstand the stretch, even though it's only a handful of weeks. We'll get into that coming up as we wrap up today's episode. Let's talk about game time first, though, because the Phillies are well, playing three more games at home. They're playing tonight. They're playing Saturday and Sunday against the Marlins. Still some great pitching you're going to see from the boys in the – well, they're not wearing pinstripes. The boys in the Phillies uniforms. So how do you get into the building? You go ahead and check out game time. They're an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. And they've got killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, their lowest price guarantee. I mean, how much more do you need? Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Now, it's not just baseball tickets. You can buy tickets at any sporting event, theater, comedy, concerts. I'm a country music guy. I know during the summer – Concert scene is awesome here in Philadelphia and really across the country. And it's not just country music. It's all kinds of music. Concerts are better in the summer when the weather's nice. You can find tickets through game time for that. Any type of events, man. They've got, if you need a ticket to get into it, chances are game time can help you out with it. So go ahead and check it out and check out all those features where you can see the total price before you actually get to that final screen, the view from your seat. Uh, you can get special deals. Uh, flash deals, zone deals, all kinds of stuff. And if you find tickets in the same row and section for less, what you're going to do, well, you're going to get the game time guarantee payout, which is 110% of the difference. Not just the difference. No, they're going to give you 10% on top of it. There is legitimately no better place to go get your tickets than game time. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets and download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on MLB. We'll make it even better. You'll get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on MLB for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So, my immediate thought when I saw the news about Bryce Harper and Kyle Schwarber going down and Harper's injury seemed major was okay, you got to make a trade. But this is a great idea of a conversation ahead of the deadline. Now, it's still early ahead of the deadline. We still have about a month until the trade deadline. So we're not jumping into anything crazy right now, or at least I'll tell you why we shouldn't be. But I think this is a good conversation to tell you the mindset of what the Phillies should be going into the trade deadline. I'll explain. So when Harper goes down and Schwarber goes down and you have this conversation about do you need to trade for somebody to keep this team afloat, while those guys recover. Is Cody Clemens enough? Probably not. Is Johan Rojas enough out in the outfield? Probably not. Are you creating enough in the bottom of the lineup without JT? So there's a catcher down there that's probably not all that good, neither Stubbs or Marchant. Like, you have a lot of backups playing. Do you need to go and get a veteran player that can play first base to remedy the Bryce Harper situation? Do you need to go get a veteran bat from a team that stinks to just DH for a couple weeks? And my answer was no to that. Don't fill a spot on this roster. It's why I'm anti-trading for a catcher. It's why I'm anti-trading for a first baseman. It's why I'm anti-trading for a DH. Because there's no reason to give up assets on a team that has an eight-game lead in their division and still the best record in the National League. There's no need to give up assets for a guy that's going to play two to three weeks. It makes no sense to do. 
It just doesn't. I believe in the quality of this team. I believe the Phillies are going to continue to win some ball games. They're not going to win at the clip they were playing at. That would be insane. But they're going to continue to win some ball games, and they're going to stay afloat without Harper and Schwarber. They might not exceed expectations. They might not meet the prior expectations, but they're not going to completely just go over, I don't know, however many games, over 15 until Harper and Schwarber come back. They'll be okay, I promise you. What it does do, though, when I see these injuries, it does prompt you to want movement. And to me, my initial reaction was, you got to go get an outfielder now. And it's got to be a guy who can start because that opens up the versatility to fill these other positions. Rather than needing Whit Merrifield in the outfield, now maybe you could play Whit Merrifield somewhere in the infield that allows, so like play him at shortstop, so that you can, I don't know, DH Trey Turner, so that you can move Bohm to first and play Edmundo Sosa at third. Like the more steady players you have, the more versatility you get out of the other guys that you can bounce around a little bit. It's less holes to fill in a roster that all of a sudden <laughs> feels like it has a bunch of holes. So could you go get Luis Robert now? Could you go get Brent Rooker from the Oakland Athletics? Like, these are moves that I would be on the phone about if I'm Dave Dabrowski. Not adding a first baseman, not adding a DH, not adding, like, a corner outfielder rotation guy or a bench depth piece. I do think they're going to do that in the outfield as well if that's available. But go getting a starting left fielder or a starting center fielder. It is nice they called up Rojas. We'll see if that makes any difference. He was tearing the cover off the ball down in AAA. Will that translate? Maybe. Maybe that's a little bit of the confidence boost he needs. And now his moment comes back up. I, I don't know, man. Like, we'll see what these guys are, but the Phillies have a lot more question marks. And I think the simplest solution, because the outfield right now, here are your outfielders available on this team as of the roster moves earlier today. You have David Dahl, Brandon Marsh, Whit Merrifield, Christian Pache, Nick Castellanos, and Johan Rojas. Those are your six outfielders currently available. Let's just run through that. Rojas can't hit his weight. Now, maybe he can come enough from AAA, but when he was up here, offensively not great, defensively not as good as you thought he was going to be. This is just in the moment. I still believe in Rojas. Pache can't hit his weight. Well, actually, he probably can because they're both skinny guys. But bottom line is both those guys can't really hit. To field it, can't really hit. David Dahl was on a miracle run. He's... Okay, not good against lefties. You put him against a righty, anything can happen. Play solid defense. Cool. Not a plus-plus player. Nick Castellanos is going to play in right field. He is your best option in the outfield right now. Uh, Whit Merrifield has been a major disappointment. Not hitting a lick, not fielding all that well. I don't know what you'd do with Whit Merrifield at this point. Uh, I actually do have a Whit Merrifield theory that I'm going to talk about in an episode tomorrow about these injuries and why – this could be an opportunity for him. But for this moment, we'll just say Whit Merrifield, whatever. Don't know really what he's giving you. Um, who am I missing? Brandon Marsh, I think, has to be an everyday player considering what we just ran through there. Like The guy kind of has to be someone you put out there day in and day out to make a difference for the Philadelphia Phillies because you don't really have that many other options. That's just kind of how you have to look at it. I feel like, am I missing something? Bottom line is they don't have a lot of options, and none of them are really all that good ones. Nick Castellanos is going to play right. Adding someone who can play center every day would be a godsend for the Phillies. And it's something you were going to need anyway. It's not like this is going to go away when Schwarber and Harper come back. It's still going to be a hole. So it just accelerates, for me, the timeline to get help in the outfield. Maybe they'll do that. Maybe Dave Dombrowski trusts his team's ability to stay afloat more than me. I will say this. This is a thought I'll leave you with today when it comes to the Philadelphia Phillies and injuries so far this year. Every situation where they've had an injury, the player who has stepped in has stepped up majorly. There's been nothing that slowed this team down. They haven't gone on a stretch where it's just like, mm, they're floundering. The stretches that make you feel like they're floundering are 500 ball, which is not floundering. Just look around baseball. There are a lot of sub-500 teams over the course of the year. If your bad stretches are 500, you'll be just fine. But – there is some kind of magical feel about this team that every player that steps into an important role due to injury or guys getting sent down or things like that, they play their part to a T. Edmundo Sosa, Stubbs and Marchand, uh, Spencer Turnbull to start the year, 
Christopher Sanchez uh, stepping into a role with the fifth spot in the rotation not being great. Like uh, there have been some amazing moments for guys, depth pieces wise. Cody Clemens earlier in the year, David Dahl, all of this stuff. It needs to continue, and you kind of get that vibe from this team that it probably will. Right? Maybe that's just seeing sunshine and rainbows, seeing things through Phillies colored tinted glasses. But you know me. You know that's how I consume the baseball season. You know that's how I feel about this team. So. Uh, let's hope I'm right. And let's hope the Philadelphia Phillies get a win tonight. We're going to have a special Saturday episode again tomorrow. Uh, we're going to discuss that deal with Spencer Turnbull's injury, dive a little bit deeper into that. I also have a theory on Whit Merrifield and why this could potentially help him get out of the slump he's been in all season long. And we'll talk about what's going on with the Marlins series. So we'll get into that, but thank you again for checking us out here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This has been Locked On Phillies. Yeah, please make sure you're rating, reviewing, Subscribing to the YouTube if you have not done that yet. It's the number one way to help us out here on Locked on Phillies and tell us you like the content. Uh, that is how you do it. So thanks again, and I will talk to you tomorrow on the next episode of Locked on Phillies.